Welcome to the Nathan Nephew Show. I'm Nathan Nephew, your host here for a uh, half hour, 25 minutes or so. As always, I say it every week, but there's tons in the news. Try to whittle it down a little bit. And in fact, this show, I think what I'm going to do, as you know, if you've been listening, I've, I've been going through the Constitution part by part, whatever makes sense for a show. And I'm getting, uh, well, actually, we're about halfway through the Bill of Rights. Uh, and what I actually decided to do based on feedback and just kind of uh, my experience with this thing is I'm going to finish up the Bill of Rights. We've got around the Seventh Amendment, so eight, nine, ten, what that's, that's four, four amendments. I think I'm going to finish them all up today. Um, they're fairly short, so it shouldn't take too long. Uh, but it'll take possibly longer than, than I normally spend on the Constitution. Maybe not. We'll see. But anyway, plan on doing that, finishing it up today. And then, as I've said, what I plan to do is actually create a series or different segments or, 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 or whatever separate from the actual half hour show that I do here. They'll be available. I'll, I'll announce it. It'll be on my website, nathannephew.com. You'll be able to go if you're bored. Or whatever you wanna wanna hear, you wanna bore your friends, or whatever you wanna do. Um, I think I'll do that. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll do the whole Constitution, finish up the rest of the the amendments, and and do the the actual Constitution as ratified in Bill of Rights again, separated out, probably section by section. Um, we'll see. I haven't figured that out because some, you know, there there are certain sections that are just a sentence. So I don't know if it makes sense to do an entire, uh, an entire segment on that, but uh, I'll figure it out. We'll get it going and, and maybe I can add a little more detail than I have on the shows because as you know, I've been just kind of rushing through it, reading the words and explaining very briefly what my take is without going into depth of, uh, what the intention was in all cases. Anyway, I mean, some cases that I did or, uh, you know, how it's been used over the years or, uh, if it's something we still follow or even, I, I didn't even mention which parts have been modified by amendments yet. Cause there were parts I just went through it and an amendment came along and changed it. I didn't even get into that. I just read it as ratified and now we're going through the amendments, but I think I'll start with that, uh, seventh amendment and then get on to some other stuff. I had Pretty interesting time um, reading some comments, not only on Facebook, but also on Amazon, about my book, My Parents Open Carry. Pretty good stuff. It's nothing new. Uh, I just wanted to mention how tolerant the left and how tolerant the anti-gun liberals are and how they're all for freedom of speech unless they disagree with your speech and then they think you should just go kill yourself. All right. Seventh Amendment, in suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved, and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. So, in a civil case where the amount being litigated on is greater than $20, and there's no law that says otherwise, or court uh, precedent set by by a court by a prior decision on how to handle a similar case the right of a trial by jury shall be preserved you can have a jury help determine that sort of thing a civil case exceeding twenty dollars unless a law is written saying otherwise no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise reexamined in any court of the United States other than by rules set by common law. So if a jury decides on a civil case, it can't be retried unless there's a law written that says it can. So you have to be careful with that one because it leaves a lot open to, this is what the Constitution says, but we're going to allow Congress to create laws that change this. All right, Article 8. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. This is the cruel and unusual punishments amendment. Obviously, the payment 
the punishment must fit the crime, essentially is what this say this is saying. If you get picked up for littering, and we found out on at odds that littering third offense may be a felony in Illinois, you cannot be imposed a seventy two bajillion dollar fine. You can also probably not be sentenced to death, although they are crazy in Illinois. Who knows what they will do? But basically, and, and that's an interesting one because the death penalty is extreme. There's there's no two ways about that. The death penalty is extreme. But there is a strong argument to be made that it's not cruel and unusual in all cases. When you have, you know... um a, a murder. Uh, there's a lot of people. There's a case to be made, and whichever side you're on, there is an argument to be had of whether executing somebody is cruel and unusual when they did way worse than the nice, painful death that you're going to give them to somebody else. <clears throat> so that deals with excessive fines and excessive punishment. Ninth Amendment. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The Constitution lays out rights, especially in the Bill of Rights. These are rights that the people have, and it's essentially just restating many natural rights that, that the people have, like the right to bear arms, the right to free speech, the right to be secure in your person, uh, life, property, all of that. That does not mean that this is an all-inclusive, absolute list of the rights that the people have. It's a list of rights, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it lists every single right that the people have. Just because the Constitution does not spell out a right of the people does not mean that the people don't have that right. It doesn't spell out your right to walk backwards in your living room. But we all know you have the right to walk backwards in your living room. It's not an all-inclusive, exhaustive, absolute list. And the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. This one is important. It says... If the power of whatever action we're talking about is not given to the federal government, to the United States, then that power goes to the states or to the people. And the people in the state decide what to do with that power, if anything. This is part of the Constitution that gets overlooked so often. I was just doing a little reading, actually, before the show, uh, and and I thought this was interesting, that George Washington, when George Washington was president, the first president of the United States, there were five cabinet positions in the executive branch, plus the vice president, so six at that level, let's say. The secretaries of foreign affairs, treasury, and war, Attorney General, and Postmaster General. All things that can fall within the limits of the Constitution. Of course, Foreign Affairs uh, was changed to Secretary of State, and that's what it is today. We Good old John Kerry. But 60 years later, there were only two more cabinet-type positions added. Uh, within, I, I mean... Over the next 60 years, there were only, there were only two more. And then 40 years later, probably the first, so this is a hundred years after George Washington's term. And probably the first secretary, the first cabinet position that actually did not explicitly fall within the Constitution. And it was a start of a huge downhill spiral. The Secretary of Agriculture, Grover Cleveland, 1889, appointed a secretary or created the Secretary of Agriculture. Nowhere in the Constitution does it explicitly give the executive branch the power to create a Secretary of the Agriculture, somebody to oversee agriculture in the United States. It's not in the Constitution. Now, of course, we look at general welfare. That's not what the general welfare cause 
uh, clause meant, and we went over that before. But now, now, there are something like 15 cabinet positions. 15 cabinet positions. It started with five, plus the vice president. We're up to 15, including things like Homeland Security, including things like education, things like urban development, all of these things that are not in the Constitution. This is how the executive branch is just soaking up as much power as they possibly can. And it, and they're just adding on and nobody's questioning it. But if you look at the Tenth Amendment, it says powers not delegated to the United States are reserved by the states or the people. It's something we need to keep track of. It's something we need to take care of and just know that when another like secretary of education or something is added to the executive branch, that it is not within the realm of the Constitution, and it's something that should be questioned. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll come back. I want to talk, like I said, I want to talk about the uh, the awesome anti, anti-gun anti folks that are just so kind, so kind, and, you know, I'll take, I'll take the publicity. So I'll be right back. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich, working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare, having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom66.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom66.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 66.com. Go to freedom66.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom66.com. Red State Talk Radio is All American Talk Radio. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-5470. That's 800-953-5470. 800-953-5470. The Nathan Nephew Show, somewhat unique. Somewhat unique? Yes, somewhat unique. So I was I was talking before the break about uh, and earlier about about this anti gun group that decided to post a link to our book, My Parents Open Carry. Which you know what? Thank you. I mean, I mean, anybody who wants to share a link link to buy our book, I greatly appreciate it. And this is nothing new, and I'm not surprised. And it, I just, I, it, it's just a good teachable moment to point out the hypocrisy of the left, the hypocrisy of the anti-gun crowd, talking about tolerance and you need to accept all people and freedom of speech and all this garbage. Well, obviously freedom of speech isn't garbage, but when they say it, it's it's complete garbage because they don't mean it. They only mean it if you agree with them. Well, anyway, they posted they posted a a. Uh, a link to to the book My Parents Open Carry, and they nominated it for the creepiest book of the year because, well, it's a book 
that lets you talk to your children about guns. And we all know how bad guns are. And if any parent ever wants to talk to their children about guns, that's just creepy. Why would you? I mean, you know, because as a parent, you know for a fact that every single place your children go to is a gun-free zone. You know 100% that when they go to Jimmy's house down the street, you know their parents don't own guns, and you know that nobody that visits Jimmy's parents while your child is there brings a gun into the home. You know for sure that nobody will ever leave a gun laying around anywhere ever, so there's no need to talk to your children about guns because if you talk to your children about guns, they're going to grow up, they're going to shoot up a school, They're going to just murder people because that's what children do when there's guns around. We saw Diane Sawyer. She told us that, that all you can't stop a child, no matter what, from picking up a gun if there's a gun because kids can't be taught. Kids are so dumb that you just can't teach them anything. Anyway, they posted this link, and there's hundreds of comments of just hypocritical anti-gun morons talking about how well i first of all the funny ones about how we wrote this book which means we want to murder people and and we're in bed with the NRA which if they knew the NRA stance on open carry they might take a little bit different approach to that but <clears throat> you get the ones that say this, this this book shouldn't be allowed in public this i can't believe that people would read this book nobody should be allowed to write this book this should be banned and all this all this this garbage that's I, that's the nicest word i can say these people from the left who don't want you to ban their freedom of speech, their their freedom to love anybody, their freedom to kill babies, their freedom to do whatever they want. But if you exercise your right to free speech and you say something or write something that is at odds with what they think and what, what, what they be- believe is right, well, you shouldn't be allowed to do that because don't I have the right – Actually, one of the reviews on Amazon, because what they do is they they gang up and they make themselves feel better by posting fake reviews on Amazon on the book, which is fine. Again, don't care. It's a badge of honor, and I'm being honest about that. It makes me feel good when I see this sort of thing. Every time I see this sort of thing happen about something I've done, I know I'm doing the right thing. This is how you measure success, because when people start talking about you and start trying to destroy you, then you know you've done something right. You've struck a nerve. These people that are saying these things are exactly the people that I want to warn the rest of the country about. They're exactly the people that get us anti-gun legislators in Colorado, get us Barack Obama, Eric Eric Holder, and these sorts of people in power. These are the people that we need to watch out for and that we need to educate the rest of the non-insane population about. But one of the reviews... On Amazon, I believe it was on Amazon, talks about how this violates their First Amendment right to be able to exercise free speech without being afraid because somebody might be carrying a gun. So the fact that me or anybody is standing there with a gun in a holster is violating their First Amendment rights because they're too afraid to speak, which is bullcrap. They they even mentioned suing open carriers, which I'm like, eh, good luck. Good luck. There's open carriers all around the country suing governments for infringing on their rights. So good luck trying to sue just an ordinary citizen carrying a firearm legally for violating your First Amendment rights. Because first of all, I don't believe that somebody like me can really violate your First Amendment right because the First Amendment talks about the government not stopping you from exercising your right or from, from speaking your mind. It doesn't say anything about other citizens and especially if we're on private property, which most of these cases are in a store or something when you come across other people. I mean, sometimes in a park, but really, really it, the hypocrisy is just hilarious. I mean, if you head over to Amazon, uh, just search for my parents open carry. You, you'll, you can find the book. You can read the reviews. It's, it's pretty funny. Uh, while you're there, pick up a copy. It says, um, it says it's out of stock, but if you actually order it, what will happen is Amazon will get it from the publisher and then you'll get a copy. It won't take that long. It's, so it's, it's not really out of stock, uh, at the, the publisher has some copies. Amazon just doesn't have any. Uh, 
So <laughs> that's really all I have to say about that. It, it it made me laugh, and again, I feel good about it. Now, this other thing that I want I came across today, and let me see where it's from because I don't want to get this wrong. It is from OpenSecrets.org. They published a list of top donors since 1989, from 1989 to 2014, political donors. And what we hear all the time from the left is, oh, Americans for Prosperity, they're just backed by the Koch brothers. The Koch brothers are just spending billions and billions of dollars on politics, and it's so wrong because when you let these big organizations and these rich people put money in politics, that's not free speech. It's not free speech, and it it takes all of the fairness out of politics. Well, OpenSecrets.org posted this this list. And the Koch brothers are actually 59th. They are the 59th most uh, for most donations. There are 58 people ahead of the Koch brothers that donate more money to political causes. And a bunch of them ahead of the Koch brothers, give money to Democrats. You think Republicans, oh, they're just, uh, they get all the money and they're rich and that's why they win even though they lose all the time, so I don't understand that one. But we have like the NEA, IBW, UAW, Carpenters and Joiners, SEIU, all of the big unions. And in fact, six of the biggest union donors gave 15 times more money to Democrats than the Koch brothers did. Well, then the Koch brothers donated. And all of this union money, well, most of this union money, as you know, is going to Democrats. The unions aren't donating to Republicans, that's for sure. But we hear over and over again that when you allow corporations, when you allow groups to donate as much money as they want, it's not fair because the Republicans get all the money. In the Koch brothers, Koch brothers are evil. Koch brothers, maybe look at the unions. I've been saying this for years. Everybody else has been saying this for years, too. It's on both sides. But this list is just its just ironic because the Democrats complain so much, but the Democrats seem to have a good majority of the top donors, uh, groups, you know, donating to these liberal causes, liberal candidates, liberal organizations, whatever it is. It's about all the time I have, though. I'm running out here, so I want to remind you... Head over to NathanNephew.com if you're not there already. Stay tuned into Red State Talk Radio right here. Send me an email, talk at NathanNephew.com. Look me up on Facebook. Listen to Ad Odds, AdOddsShow.com, as well as pick up a copy, if for no other reason than to annoy the liberal anti-gunners, MyParentsOpenCarry.com, and then you can buy it from there or from Amazon. Head over to Amazon either way. Write a review about it. That'll really annoy. Maybe comment on some of their reviews. Because I know for sure almost all of them that, that reviewed the book on Amazon have not read the book. But they did add a little comic relief to my week. And they actually did take several guesses for what the name of the sequel will be. Uh, some things like how to deal with it when your child misuses a handgun and shoots up their school. Or, or how I survived therapy because my parents carried guns and all this other ridiculous stuff. What they don't know is that there may or may not be a sequel in the works, and I, I don't know if I should announce this or not, but um, they'll be really happy if, if that is the case. I think they're assuming that there won't be, and I'm not saying that we're working on anything, but if we were, I can just imagine the way they would react to that, and, and it'd be great, and I'd welcome them to post a link to that one too, and say what they will again again I want to stress that I wear this sort of thing as a badge of honor it makes me feel it 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 reinforces my thought that I am doing the right thing that I'm actually on the right side of the issue when people as crazy as any anti-gun person that I've met attacks me attacks my work attacks things I've done I know that I'm doing it right See you next week.